what is Rory looking for in um, Jita, character-wise? And what do your close friends and family think about your character? I think there's the last question. Am I talking to anyone? Find out on the next episode of WWE. I'm kidding. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I am Rory Sangwabokwane. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. It's great to have you in my little corner of YouTube where we speak all things adulting, faith, career development, personal development, everything that is relevant for us to navigate our young adult lives. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That red button must turn gray. Give this video a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you enjoyed about today's video and what other videos you'd like to see. Share this with anybody and everybody who you think might need it. And last but not least, hit those notification bells so that you do not miss another video so without wasting any more time let us get straight into today's video so we're back back again this is a very unconventional sit down for me um i took to the instagram streets um to get some questions from you guys regarding topics that we chat about on this channel some aren't necessarily what about what we chat about on this channel but nonetheless um, I will respond to everyone that I got. So sit back, relax, make a cup of tea. It's a bit chilly. Um, make a cup of tea and let's do the things. Okay. I'm not going to waste time because there are a number of, um, questions and I don't want to find myself having to make a part two of this. Um, so the first question that I want to answer how have you been sitting or seating in your new role? Um, and this person is so happy for me. Um, I have, okay, so I'm five, five months in um, and I have learned a lot. I'm enjoying the, the new role. Um, I'm enjoying the balance I have. I'm enjoying learning and being excited, um, you know, about things that I don't know. I'm also learning a lot about, you know, being a good leader, you know, um, because I am in a position of leadership within this role and I am loving that, you know, I'm loving the influence I'm able to have over people's lives within my workplace and basically just forging forward um, and being proud of my age, being proud of my gender, being proud of my race in a banking environment which is also known for like old white women old white men um and here i am as 25 year old little kid who is coming in and saying hey this is a plus b <laughs> you know so i'm i'm really enjoying it i'm learning a lot i'm learning a lot not just about you know the subject matter that i'm working with but also about myself and i'm using this time to also develop myself not just as a leader but as a banking professional you know um i think i'll be within the banking space for a little while um not sure what god is leading me to and what my path might look like but my plan is to be in banking for a little while um, to learn about the financial services space um, and see how I can best make an impact within this sphere. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning a lot. It is very overwhelming, especially when you are a boss and you're expected to know things and you're just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't know what you're talking about. Um, but I am learning a lot. And you guys know on this channel, the real OGs know how much I love learning and how much I love being a sponge. And in as much as, yes, I'm a boss, um, I also have superiors to report to. And um, they are also so patient with teaching me, with sitting me down and saying, Rory, okay, this is what happened. You know, if there's a project that I didn't know about, this is what happened before you joined. This is what the outlook is. Can you run with it? You know, and their doors are always open to answer questions and so forth. So I'm really, really blessed to be in a team where people are really nice. People are so nice. Oh, Lord, thank you. People are so nice. Um, I think 
that's the biggest thing that I was praying for, you know, um, in any environment, whenever you change jobs, the uncertainty of whether it's going to be a good environment, whether you're going to want to go back to the other environment or not, you know, um, I've never had to second guess that the people have been super nice. Obviously, um, each job has its scandals and gossips and all, but I'm really keeping to myself and engaging where I need to in the most impactful way and trying to just keep out of all of that stuff, you know, um, but I will, I am planning to do a half year review of my experience in banking. So that will come out within the next month or so. Um, and I will then break down everything that I've learned, um, how strategy is different in banking as opposed to consulting and all of that stuff. So, um, do stay tuned for that. Make sure your notification bells are on, make sure you've subscribed so that you don't miss that video. And thank you so much for being happy and proud of me. It's very rare to find people online who barely even know you. I don't know if I know you, but I'll assume I don't, um, who barely even know you um, asking such questions um, and saying or making such remarks. So thank you. Hey, some of these, um, I'll come back to that other question. Um, because, because, but nonetheless, the next question is, how would you say you have changed and evolved over the past year? I think um, I've become more obedient to God's call um, and where God says I should go. I think in the past, it's not that I wasn't obedient, but I think I wasn't as sensitive to his presence and as sensitive to the things that he wants to say to me and through me. Um, and I think I am being so intentional about strengthening my relationship with God that it is enabling me to step into spaces that he is calling me to. Not, hey, Rory, I think it's a good idea. And I say this a lot, that just because it's a good idea doesn't mean it's a God idea. So I'm able to now start seeing that, hey, my spirit is unsettled when it comes to this. Let's take a right instead of a left, you know. Um, so I, I really have grown um, and I have come to know God in a new light. Um, not just as that big man in the sky who answers your, you know, prayers from time to time. But he's also your guiding light. The word says that he will direct your footsteps. And I'm, I'm living that out, you know. <laughs> um, he really does direct those footsteps. And I'm really grateful for him being patient with me. Um and teaching me and revealing things to me um, along my journey of coming to know him as well as coming to know myself in him as well. Next question. When are you dropping the skincare routine? Since I know exactly who sent this, <laughs> this question. Um, I don't know. And I say that because I really don't know how some of this content will be received. Number one, I don't even know how to record half of this content. I say that because my niche when it comes to the content i create is personal development it's career development it's you know young adulting and navigating adulthood and i'm not a beauty content creator so this isn't the first time that not just her but other people have asked for skincare routine um uh, yeah i and i don't use anything fancy i use a combination of Porsche M and Nivea. I use a Nivea face wash and everything else is Porsche M. I do sometimes, not sometimes, I do have two fundamentals. Um, I'll try and actually take a picture of everything and put it here. Um, fundamentals serums, one for the day that I use, which is a vitamin C one, and then um, one for the evening, which is retinol. I also use the Porsche M serum, the Marula one. So yeah, that's that's it, really. I don't use anything fancy, the Gua Sha Wat Wats and the masks and the... I do do masks from time to time, um, but like maybe once a week or once every two weeks, whenever I remember to, genuinely, whenever I remember to. But I keep things very simple. I use the Dermopol sunscreen. I don't leave the house without sunscreen, um, whether it's during the day or at night. Um, and that's about it. Nothing hectic. There's no, there's no rocket science there, but yeah. Hey, this next question. Hey, Miss Rory. I don't have an answer to your question. Uh, please go and hear from God. Please go and pray and fast. Please go hear from God because nah, 
I don't have an answer to your question. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, hi, what are the best assets to invest in as a young professional looking to build their wealth? Um, so this is a tricky one, right? First of all, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have any of those accreditations. So I'm going to speak from my own opinion um, and the things that I've learned throughout my very few years as a young adult. Um, the first thing that you need to invest in that is an asset is your mind. Um, educate yourself, immerse yourself in how um, the economy works, immerse yourself in different investment accounts, different savings accounts, different check accounts, all of that stuff. Those things are the building blocks to how you are going to build your wealth. Um, invest in um, assets or rather platforms that are in line with your risk appetite, right? I'm a very conservative investor. So I do things where I know that the money is going to grow, even if it's not going to be as big of a reward as um, stock, for example. Yes, I have I have investments in stock, but I don't put, like most of my money is not in stocks because I'm a very scared person. And I think the older I get and the more financially savvy I become and the more financially literate I become, I'm able to open up that risk appetite a bit more. Um, last year, the year before, I had a session with my financial advisor and it came out as conservative. Last year, this time, I had the same conversation. It came out as moderate, right? So I'm clearly, as I get to know, you know, how money works and how different assets and, you know, investment vehicles work, I'm able to say, I, I don't mind dipping my toe in that. Um, but safe places where you know that your money will grow, maybe not as quickly as you want it to, are things like um, unit trusts, things like bonds. Um, right now is not the best um, time for government bonds to be invested in but nonetheless they are you, you're guaranteed your money back you know um, stocks if you're going to invest in stocks make sure you understand the company make sure you understand the industry don't invest in things that you don't know um, don't invest in companies that you don't understand because then it's difficult for you to answer questions that you're asking yourself about why is it performing like this why is it doing that if it's a bad time for fuel industry you'll understand why you are you know, stock is doing badly. So invest in um, vehicles that you understand and in industry that you understand. Um, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't say, yeah, go to Ellen Gray and do, yay, hey, these, because then when you lose your money, you're going to say, but Rorisang, you said, and I refuse to be held accountable for any of that. Um, but that's why I started with your mind read 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 listen 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 in immerse yourself in financial content so that you can number one understand what type of relationship you have with money um, and number two with that relationship in consideration what is my risk appetite and then you can decide what investment vehicles you are then going to invest in i hope that answers your question Some of these I'm skipping because, yeah. Um, okay. The next one would would I leave the city and live in the country if my partner suggests it? It's very great assumption of partner. Um, not rural or anything, just a chilled homestead, um, about two hours away from town. Yes and no. I would have a holiday home in the country. I love like unplugging and going to very remote places, but I've I was born and raised in the city. Like I'm a concrete jungle girl. I I have I, I'm so accustomed to having everything at my fingertips. I step out of my house. There's a shopping center two minutes away. Um, I can order things on Uber Eats and whatever, and I know they're going to be here in less than an hour. I like that convenience, and I won't be able to have that convenience if I live outside of the city. So I really do love being outside. And I think when I start creating travel content on this channel, you'll see that the places I visit are very naturey, very remote, very serene, because I like that break from what I know as the busy, fast paced life, you know, but I don't think I don't think I would move there like officially officially i'd go visit i'd maybe have a holiday home in a very remote place um, where i know that i'm going there to unplug but to live there full time 
how am I supposed to drive to my business? How am I supposed to drive to speaking gigs? How am I supposed to drive to work if I'm still within, you know, the formal employment space? How am I supposed to go see my financial advisor? How am I supposed to see my friends if they're not in the same area? How am I supposed to see my parents if they're not in the same area? I, I like the convenience of being able to drive 20 minutes to my mom's house, for example, you know? Now, if I'm going to take two hours to get there, you know? So, um, yeah, yes and no. Yes, but not full time. Uh, 2% of the time. And the other part would be in the city because that's all i know and it's just convenient perhaps if the question was um moving to like outlying areas where not uh, things aren't far but um you know it's it's not in the hub then maybe yes i'd consider it um but yeah also if my partner is suggesting it he needs to have a reason for suggesting it are we starting a business are we um you know running a farm what what are we doing outside of the city let it make sense and then maybe the conversation will be a bit different um what advice would you give to an average student who aims to climb the corporate ladder learn 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 and remember that um education doesn't stop when you get your degree continue to upskill yourself, continue to remain relevant. Right now I'm busy with an AI um, short course. And that's because that's where the world is going, you know, remain relevant, learn how to code, even if it's the most basic form, use SQL or learn SQL or learn another, you know, coding language, Python, whatever, R squared, whatever it is, um, be relevant in the market and also see how whatever career stream you're following how you can continue to evolve it to remain relevant if it means doing a digital course on the side and being able to say i'm an accountant with this and this is how i can use this knowledge in the accountancy field um do that make sure that the knowledge that you're learning um, or that you're gaining is forming you into an asset for whatever company you want to be in also know that um you're not loyal to any company. You're not loyal to any institution. I think we are sold this idea as young professionals that you must stay here. Minimum this many years. That, 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 that. I'm not a job hopper. So me saying this, I'm not saying job hop every year. Change your job. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if you feel that you've hit a growth plateau or if you want to explore different um you know, industries, if you want to explore different um types of environments, don't feel like you have, like you owe a place something. You don't, you know. So, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. But I do have quite a lot of videos on, you know, um, thriving within the corporate space. I do have, the most recent video was a advice for black um, females. And I'm quite sure it's relevant to black males as well. Um, advice for them to thrive in corporate. I do have a lot of videos regarding that. Um, so, do give those a check and I hope they continue to unpack this topic further for you. How do you overcome imposter syndrome? Um, once again, I have a video about imposter syndrome, um, but for me, it continues to evolve, right? The biggest thing that I'm doing right now is speaking the word of God over my life, you know, and remembering that just because I'm afraid doesn't mean it shouldn't be done. So I must do it afraid and God will then equip me with the courage. Um, in the book of Acts, you know, before the disciples were, you know, started their ministry, started growing um, the church, they prayed for boldness. They prayed for courage and they asked for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit onto them, you know, um, and that, you know, passage of scripture continues to remind me that even myself going into boardrooms, going into different interviews, going into speaking gigs, whatever it is. Yes, as tiny as I am, as limited with limited experience that I have, um, God has gone before me. God is greater in me than whoever is in the world. You know, I have the mind of Christ. I am loved. I have authority. Um, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. You know, um, I have found favor in God and in man. Um, 
these are the type of scriptures that I continue to speak over my life. And actually at my work desk, and this is the same thing that I did even in varsity, where literally in my res room, any wall that you turned to had Bible scriptures pasted on it or quotes from the word or quotes from one of my favorite pastors or whatever pasted on it um, to remind me that everywhere I go, yes, that is the truth. That is a truth. And that doesn't mean I'm not scared. That doesn't mean that I'm not nervous stepping into certain spaces. I am. But I know that God, first of all, wouldn't call me to something and leave me there. But also, he has gone before me. He is greater in me. He has not given me the spirit of um, fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And those are the things that I continue to speak over my life and to speak over whatever situation I might find myself in that requires me to be bold and courageous and so forth. Um... But yeah, just like the disciples, before they went out and started building the church, they prayed for boldness and courage to be set apart, to be confident, to be um, that driving force for the church to grow. And I feel like that is, um, you know, a similar prayer that we need to pray as young professionals in the corporate space, as young um Adults within the church space, you know, if you're trying to um, grow in ministry and so forth, those are the type of prayers that we need to pray. We need to pray for boldness because it's not like it's not there. It's there. It's just we don't take it. We don't leverage it. Um, you know, some of these gifts and talents, I was speaking to a friend earlier today. We have these gifts and talents. We just don't realize that we do. And that's because we don't read the word of God, you know. So read the word of God and it will tell you the truths about who you are, who God is, and about how you can navigate this thing called life with boldness and with the authority that you have. Because you are a co-heir with Christ. You are royalty. And I mean, if you are royalty, it means you can call the shots. Don't misquote me on that. Um, because you can, you can take that out of context and that's not going to be cute. But nonetheless, I hope that helps. But like I mentioned, I do have a video on this. I think I recorded it, if not last year, the year before. Um, and I still believe it's still quite relevant for today's day and age. Cool. Um, some are not questions. This one says, I'm here for you. You're so special to me. I don't know who this is, but may God bless you and continue to, um, use you to share his love and to spread his love and compassion over the world so thank you so 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 much for those kind words and thank you for being here for me knowing that i have an army behind me means the world to me so thank you so much sis or bro or whoever you are i don't know who you are um another question is <laughs> how are you doing mentally um to be honest, it's a continuous journey. Some some seasons are really good and some seasons aren't so good. I think um, some seasons of frustration kind of, you know, yeah, you know, it's uh, when there's friction and when the enemy is trying to push back on some of the things that God is trying to do in your life or some of the things that you're trying to do in order to obey God, um, in those seasons, it's very easy to fall into like a really bad space mentally. Um, but I continue to arm myself with the word of God, even in those seasons, even if I know that I'm just faithing it till I make it, you know, um, that's what it is. But mentally, I'm doing okay. And I think it goes back to the previous question about, um, you know, how have I evolved, you know, um, I'm not saying that I don't have seasons or days where I don't want to get out of bed or whatever. But um because I'm strengthening my relationship with God, I'm able to speak those truths over my life to say, you know, God is a healer, God is a restorer. And even in the situation, whatever it might be, um, he's a man of his word um, and he's not a man that he should lie and he will get me out of it. Whatever we've asked, if it be according to his will, a will we've already received it, you know. So um, that's how I'm doing mentally. Yeah, but like I said, some days are better than others. Um, some days I'm stronger than others. Most days I'm stronger than others these days, even in the stressful seasons or even in the seasons where um, I feel very despondent and discouraged. Um, even in those seasons, I am doing a lot better and I'm handling those hardships a lot better as well. But thank you. Thank you for asking. Another statement. You're super cute, to be honest. Thanks. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> Little quiet, man. Um, another question: Who do you miss the most? Um, 
I miss a lot of people. I don't know if you're speaking about people who are alive or who are no longer with us, but um, for me, when I first read this question, um, my grandfathers came to mind. I, I really miss my grandfathers. And I think I don't, like I miss what could have been if they were still around. Um, I, yeah, I, I lost my, my, my paternal grandfather at a very young age. I was still in primary school um, in 2007 and I lost my maternal grandfather very, very recently um, in the heat of COVID in 2020. And I think sometimes I look back and I'm just like, yo, where would life be if you were still here? You know, um, Opa, where would life be if you were still here? You know, um, because they, listen, I am the only granddaughter, you know, so I was really handled with care and taken care of and adored by my grandfathers. Um, I, I lie, I'm not the only granddaughter on my um, paternal, no, maternal granddad side, um, but I'm the first girl granddaughter well, yeah yeah you get what i'm saying i'm the first granddaughter and um i really was showered with a whole lot of love a whole lot of spoils and i think they really wanted the best for me um and i really hope that day in and day out i am living out their legacy you know and making the family names great with everything that i try to do um so yeah i miss my grand my grandfathers um i don't know though like i said if you were referring to someone alive or who is no longer with us so i answered it according to interpretation the next question which car do i currently drive and how was the process of buying the car how did i decide on it and break down the installment so i am driving a nissan micra at the moment um i did not buy the car myself so i cannot answer this question um however Nokukle Kumalo, I'm going to shout her out. She has a lot of videos on how to buy your first car, um, as well as Nomtan Sangam Fundisi. She also has a video on how to buy your first car. Check their videos out. Um, I do plan on having a guest on the channel who will break down that for a young professional, as well as looking at, you know, the most affordable cars um, for someone who is, you you know, earning an entry-level salary and so forth. But for now, those are the two YouTubers that I can shout out. Go over to their channels and check out their car content. But I cannot speak to the process of buying a car because I've never bought my own car. One day, God willing, yes. But at the moment, I drive a Nissan Micra. Um, not the latest version, the version that came out before it. So the active 1.0 something, something, something. Yeah. Um, next question. Um, this person has a BA degree in organizational psychology and would like to get into banking. What, how does one go about that? They check the UCT short course for project management. Is it okay? Do you need an REF certificate? I'm so confused and would like to do them this year. So next year I can start applying. So it depends. This question is very open-ended. It really depends on where you're trying to go in the bank. With organizational psychology, look at the different, um, you know, banking careers that you can venture into and that will then determine what certificates and you know designations you need to um, attain in order for you to thrive within that space um project management though is good anywhere anywhere and everywhere not just in banking you can thrive with project management and consulting you can thrive with it yes in banking you can thrive with it in business project management is extremely important because what do businesses do they run projects what do financial institutions do do. they run projects um what do consultants do they work on projects for clients you know so project management is good anywhere and everywhere that you go so i would always 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 recommend you to do some sort of project management course whether it's through linkedin um whether it's through a formal institution like you've mentioned uct whatever that might be um i would always i'll, I'll always vouch for project management um yeah I hope that helps even if it's not you going into a role saying yes i'm a project manager but um having that under your belt is really great um when recruiters or employers look for someone who they're trying to get um to run with different projects within um you know the the organization and so forth so definitely do that but also i think be a bit more specific with yourself organizational psychology what exactly do you want to attain from that do you want to um you know 
not even venture into the um, psychology space if it is what like what would that look like do you want to go into hr do you want to go into talent acquisition do you want to go into industrial psychology does that mean you need to branch into something else because we have psychologists like that within the bank so you need to be a bit more specific about um what what you're trying to do and where you're trying to take your life and then we can break down the steps for you on how best to get there another statement you're my biggest crush uh, i don't know who you are uh but shout out to you i guess um, um and next uh, another um, question slash statement i admire how strong you are in your faith as a man in his late 20s seeking to know god more what can i advise that um he doesn't get easily tempted to stray away from his path community is everything and community keeps you accountable um so i would say make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who you know are on this journey with you and who you know aren't going to dilute the word or dilute um the lessons um, and the revelations of god um in your life just to condone certain behaviors that they shouldn't be condoning um so just make sure that the community that you have around you is one that is solid one that is seeking god's face as much as you are um i think more than anything reevaluate your friends because um i've said this many times before that show me your friends i'll show you your future let's remix that show me your friends and i'll show you how far you can go in your journey with christ you know um yeah also seek god fervently for yourself you know make it a daily thing the, the book of joshua um tells us to meditate on the word day and night Fill yourself with the word so that you know what to do and what not to do in certain situations. Make sure that you're praying. Make sure that you're leaning on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because as man, we can only do so much. We can tell you not to touch the hot stove. But if you decide, Gabawena, that you're going to touch the stove, there's nothing we can do about it. You know what I mean? Um, so you need to take accountability. You need to work out your own salvation, right? Um, but also community makes that so much easier. If you know you're plugging into a solid church community, young adult community and so forth, where you know you're making friends and you're forming relationships with, um, you know, your fellow brothers in Christ there who are walking that journey as well, you guys are able to hold each other's hands and make sure that you guys stay on the right path. All the best. It's not for the faint hearted. I've been running away from these questions for a while. Okay, let me let me do this one and then I think we're almost done. How can one build up the confidence to apply for more senior positions at work? You're feeling inadequate. It goes back to the imposter syndrome one, but also don't rush going into senior positions. I say that in the sense that there's a lot to learn within junior positions, right? So figure out, I think write down what you want to learn and the skill set. And then sit down and say, is there something within um, the junior role that I'm in that is hindering me from, exp uh, from, from learning some of these, you know, things that I've written down that I want to learn from a skills perspective? If it is, or if they are, which they always will be, then you need to um, forge out a plan. You know, are you, are you applying for a senior position within the institution that you're at? Or are you looking outside? And also then what are the objectives of you looking for those positions, right? But if you're feeling inadequate, if it's a confidence thing, definitely look at my, um, imposter syndrome video, as well as the previous question that I answered within this video, um, which will guide you to how to speak life into yourself, speak life into your career. Um, because it's normal for us to be afraid. Our flesh, our flesh is afraid, you know, but equip yourself um, and guard yourself with the word of God and the truths that are in there. And that feeling of inadequacy, um, you'll be able to turn that for feelings of confidence, feelings of authority, feelings of power, etc. You've got this. Don't limit yourself and don't limit God as well. Um, one person said I should get a tattoo. Um, I already have a tattoo, so I'm assuming you're not an OG on this channel. Um, I got this tattoo 2021. Yeah, 2021. Um, do I plan on getting more? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, yes, I do. I'm just trying to figure out placement, but I do plan on getting more. But I do have 
a tattoo. It's written hope. Um, and this was basically just after I got um, a year after I got diagnosed with scoliosis. And I really felt like as a young person, a lot of things were stolen from me. Um, and this tattoo was that reminder that there's hope for tomorrow. If you still have a pulse, you still have a purpose. And there's certain things that God wants to do in you and through you, through this experience and through this journey. Um, and yeah, this is now that constant reminder when I look down at anything, because I'm always working with my hands. When I look down at anything, I'm able to remind myself that, there's hope for tomorrow, you know, and God is about to do great things in you and through you. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, I'm one step ahead of you, though. Let's go to the ones that I've been running away from. Who's your crush? Jesus is my crush. Um, yeah, I don't have an answer for you. Um, which other one did I run away from? How do I overcome? Give me two seconds, guys. What is Rory looking for in um, Jita, character-wise? And what do your close friends and family think about your character? So to the second part of your question, I can't answer that. You would have to ask them. I don't know what they think about me. Um, I, I don't know what they think about me. So you'd have to ask them. Um, if you're privileged enough to know the people that are in my circle, send them a message. If they respond, you'll get your answer. If they don't, ask this. Um... What was your first question? Um, what is Rory looking for in Mjita, character-wise? Um, I don't want to be spicy, right? But I think like Mjita, I'm looking for a God-fearing man. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be spicy, but let me correct you. Um, but I'm looking for someone who is um god fearing someone who can lead the household or lead our relationship spiritually um as well as you know the family as well i'm looking for someone who's as ambitious as i am and as supportive um as i need them to be because if you've been following me you guys know that i'm a really busy person um and I have my hands dipped in a lot of things, whether it's running the nonprofit that I um, run alongside my friend or whether it is my YouTube stuff, whether it is, you know, content creation on my other platforms, whether it is, you know, aggressively climbing the corporate ladder, um, whether it is, you know, seeking financial wealth and, you know, making certain, uh, seeking financial um, freedom and making certain, you know, sacrifices because of that. Um, I'm going to need a partner that's very supportive. Um I'm going to need someone who wants to break generational curses with me, who is ready to make hell nervous with me. Um, because, yeah, I think I have put my foot down to certain cycles that have taken place within my family um, and within my circles that I, I refuse to succumb to. And I'm going to need someone who is going to forge forth with me in those things i need someone who's very kind because i'm a very like soft-hearted person so someone who's very kind very gentle even if you reprimand me as the head of the household i need to be able to say i hear you you know um and yeah don't don't shout at me so someone very kind um someone very generous because i don't need someone who's gonna shout at me for giving away stuff um like you need to be able to see where i come from but definitely someone who's ambitious someone supportive someone very loving someone who is willing to get their hands dirty with me someone who is willing to get their knees brown because of praying um and you know fighting battles on their knees with me so yeah um and someone who's doing very well for themselves who has established themselves um and so forth because i think i've worked very hard to get myself to where i am and it would be unfair of me to have to build someone else up like that i don't mind continuing to refine the person that god gives me um but i personally feel like i've worked so hard that wherever my future husband is he must be working hard as well um so that we can continue to grow together cool um i think there's the last question am i talking to anyone find out on the next episode of wwe i'm kidding <laughs> um um, I talk to everyone every day. I speak to my mom. I speak to my brother. I speak to my dad. Um, I speak to my friends. <laughs> um, yeah. Guys, um, when it comes to things of my love life, I will continue to always be very private about those. Um, 
whether i'm speaking to someone now or not you guys will know when the cows come home so until then i will never answer questions directly or not um because am I speaking to someone? Who knows? What if I'm speaking to someone who is a brother in Christ right now, but God is preparing us to... You never know. So, if I'm talking to someone, but I do speak to people. I talk to people every day, whether it's my spiritual sisters, whether it's my actual sisters, brothers, mother, father, grandparents, you know. So, I hope that answers your question. So guys, I think that's all that we have time for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share this with anybody and everybody who you think might need it. Um, yeah, yeah. With so much love and so much light from me to you. Have an amazing rest of the day. Stay safe and God bless. Bye, guys.